Head on over to G2A and enter Kami's Crystal Cave to get some sweet deals on crystals and more. Remember to click on the lowest price and use the promo code KAMIVS to get the best deal. G2A. What's going on everyone? Kami here and we're back with another Coach Kumi. This one's going to be a sub of mine on Twitch. Oh, the blower, blower, maybe the M is silent. I don't know. I apologize. I have no idea how to pronounce your name, but I'm sure you'll correct me as soon as you see this video. And again, if you're interested in sending in your own Coach Kami clips, I want to give you a rundown real quick of how this works. If you are a sub to me on Twitch or you're in the appropriate tier on Patreon, you can contact me on Discord and be like, hey, I'm one of those things. Let me hook you up with a video. And I'm like, sure. Let's jump into the gameplay. Right now we're looking at the draft. Quick note, it is Diamond 3, I think, somewhere around there. And this is before patch 2.01, so you still got that innate cop from the Leon. Draft-wise, I think your team looks good. You have the Leon to deal with the Willow, especially during the alt. It's always important to have someone to deal with the Willow in their alt. If you have no hit scan that can, that can hit long range, then she can just rain free, and it could just be it could be point deciding, you know. The sky, a flank, sure against the Strix, but the Strix also has an authorized use with an infinite amount of reveal. Maybe not the greatest thing to pick a sky into a Strix. I don't know how the draft went out, but overall, I think you guys could definitely make this work. Anara is obviously going to be the point tank. You're going to try to be aggressive on one of the sides. I think doing like a 2-3 split is going to be good and beneficial for you. Honestly, I think the Anara, the Leon, and the Ceres should be sticking together on one side, and you and the Sky should be sticking together on the other side, and not worrying about the point. I think a lot of people always try to push towards the point. Yeah, Anara is good on the point, but she can also push sides because she's beefy and she takes a lot of heals. It's just important that when you split up like this, don't push into the team if they just do a five-man rush on your side and you just have you and Sky. So looks like he's going to go Scorch, and let's see if I can pause it in time. I did. That was close. He's got a movable object at level three, last stand, cavalier, incinerate, and brand. These are all legit. Obviously, brand is not what it is now, but obviously a very good choice though when it was available. So a thing to note real quick is this person actually, oh, they want wrecker. Uh, uh, makes sense against the, against the ruckus. That seems fine. Deployable is not that big of a deal. Yeah, that seems fine. No one else is going to want to really go Wrecker, unless the Leon would go Wrecker. Yeah, I think the Leon going Wrecker with Death and Taxes probably would have been more solid. And then you going with maybe more Rejuvenate and even Blast, somewhere around there. Picking one of those, you know? Without the Nimbles, with the Hopper Suit, maybe going Nimble, you know, without the movement speed of the card. The other thing to note is, yes, there is music in the background. He actually made his own video, so that works out. This is the... This is the exact example that I'd want, is you, the three, three of uh, your teammates being the Leon, the Inara, and the Saras just kind of pushing over on the right side and then you pushing right here and the sky going for a hard flank. And that kind of puts, it just sandwiched the crap out of them, you know? And that's kind of what you're doing, but you have no sky with you. I don't know what this guy's doing. All right, well, there's the sky and there goes the sky. Nope, she's alive. She's probably gonna die. Oh, she got a kill. Good for her. She stayed alive for a while. All right, so dropping down, getting the, getting the flank on. I mean, that was just legit, you know? You waited back there on the, on the left side you waited for the proper time to push in, and you did it. Two of them are down, I think. Maybe just maybe just one. The Ash I think the Ash died a little bit before, and she's already respawned. Be wary that there's a healer up there. So you want to try to zone them out and get as much damage as you can, but keep an eye out where your Saris is at. You did notice it. You want to back and give her line of sight so she can heal you without staying. There you go. Just like that. Without trying to get her into danger too much. Leon just got dropped. Pushing in that sky right now. Pushing in the back line right now, I think would be the best bet to help out your sky. I'm sure she's probably going to melt someone pretty low. The Inara is going to be getting healed up by the Saris. So helping out the back line and then just flanking back around on the tanks would be good. Luckily, the sky was able to pull it out, though. And pull out a couple uh, double kill. Pull out a double kill on the DPS in the back line. So coming over here to help out worked out. But I think it probably would have been better to go for the back line. And just play as that aggressive person. And let the Inara try to stay alive because she's the point tank. You just want to keep pushing on him. Keep that brand up. You can actually shoot in between here. I don't know if you're able to do it with the projectile size of Fireball, but just keep that in mind. Your lions can push through or shoot through it. You want to focus on that Willow. Um, a good thing to do here is you don't really have any interest in staying on the point right now just because there's time, right? Stay safe over that. The other thing to note is the Inara just ulted, and she's also a very low life, and you have your ult, so this would be a good time to ult for your Inara. She's able to stay alive though. Well, that would that would be a situation that you're looking for. Because if you keep the Inara alive like you did, this allows you guys to just keep on pushing. Get aggressive on that Strix. Keep pushing on that Strix. Nice try about on the drop shooting right over the shooting right over the shield, but we weren't able to pull it out. 
Things getting dropped. Now it's time to get aggressive. You don't want to get too aggressive because the payload hasn't made it quite that far yet. I think the payload might be nearing the corner over by the ramp over on the right side. There it is. Okay, so yeah, make sure you're on the range of the heels for the Saris when you're trying to push like this. This is a guy, uh, kind of a, a rough spot if you're not playing with like a, a Saris or a, uh, a Geno so you can heal through walls and stuff. One thing that you could do, and I think that the Sky should be doing it too, is pushing over here on the left side, keeping a different angle. Keeping your tank stacked up like this in the mid just allows them to just pound into you. You know, Willow especially, getting the AoE damage. So pushing in from a different angle would help out a lot. And you've, you've went through mid, but you've at least pushed over on the left side, so that works. Ying ult is up. I don't think you should really push that much on here, just because the Ying ult is up. But it looks like you planned on going for the ult. Gonna throw up a shield. Make sure to keep your shield up, you know, where they're shooting from. Immediately dash out of there. You're probably dead. I lied. Sick heals. Your Liana's down, so be aware of that. All right, all right, all right. Ruckus should get dropped here. Push on that Ruckus. Do not let him live. Perfect. Your next target is going to be that Ying. I probably would have... I maybe would have held up my shield a little bit longer, waited for my dash to go up, and then just completely jumped on her to make sure you can get her dimensional link down. So right now, your Leon should be coming back right about now. Keep pushing on this left side, honestly. 49 seconds. Uh, if anything, if you push back, what that's going to allow you to do is, is to put pressure on the Strix, who's just shooting for free. This is one of the best places for a Strix to be right now, is he just has complete and open rain on everybody. It's not good for you guys, but putting pressure on him will allow him to allow your, your team to just take a little bit of that pressure off. And if that Willow wants to go back, well, hell, she can come back, and again, that's putting pressure off. Then your goal is to stay alive. You have to realize when you're going in for aggressive as a tank, you're doing one of two things, and you need to be able to switch between these two things on a flip of a dime, a, a flip of a coin. I don't know. You either need to be aggressive to the point where you're doing damage to them, or you need to realize that you're putting pressure enough to pull the DPS back to you. Then your goal is to stay alive. So you have doing DPS, and you have staying alive. They both do great things, but they're both different things. One is killing, one is distracting. Distracting can be as good as DPS, but you have to make sure that your team is ready to take advantage of that. If your whole team is low when you go for the distraction, it won't work out too well. And if your team is just completely unaware of you guys, of you making space, it doesn't work out very well. So again, right now, probably your best bet is to stay over on the left side, poke out from a different angle, you know, as much as Fernando can poke. Definitely get aggressive on that ruckus. And then I would go straight for that, that Strix in the back line. Eh, no, you know what? This works out all right. Got the Willow. Your Nari's back on point. You don't want to both be on point, so you want to push out there to get DPS on the back line, whether that be the Ying, the Strix, or, you know, the Willow. All right, we're running back. It looks like you're going to be going right side this time. A nice route I like to go, personally, when I'm trying to push over here. If you don't have, like, a team behind you, I would always want to make sure to... Okay, you didn't really look behind you, but seeing if there's a team behind you. A sneakier way is to go underneath the bridge. So the idea is you run through either the mid side and then come underneath the bridge or you go around the right side so you you'd either go through if you were there a team you'd either go through here and then underneath or you'd go around the outside and instead of going up the ramp you'd go around it and then back under i'm not sure which way's faster uh, i'd imagine this way's faster but you also get seen by the mid and you get poked at and that could be bad staying on your mount's probably more important so you probably want to go around this other route but let's try to be more sneaky so right now you've ran into them and you are just like, hello, look at me. And that's good. Again, it's distraction. You need to make sure your team is behind you, helping you out, knowing when to throw up your shield. And the other thing is, if you would have went underneath, you could have went around to the ramp. You could have went all the way around to this ramp or that ramp, doesn't matter, the right or the left ramp, and could have put a lot more pressure on the back line without getting completely blown up. Going into everybody's line of sight like this is just going to be like, pff, it's going to be rough. Get you healed up. I'd push in right now, try to help out that Sky. That Sky is dead. Never mind. Hear that Strix? I'd keep pushing on that Strix charge. Make sure you don't get knocked off. You've got your ult up. Just be aware of that. Good job getting the heals. Keep trying to put that right pressure as much as possible. Ash isn't looking at you. Good double fireball there. I'd be looking to get to that Anara. That Anara is very, very low. That ult works. I was mainly say to save the Anara. You got your shield. So right there, I would have probably looked to... I'm not sure what your Saris is right now. But when you ulted, you turn around and you see this. You see just Deadsyville, right? And it looks like you just keep strafing more to the right and, and back. 
where I think the better position would be over here to the left side. You'd cut yourself off on a line of sight of a lot of people if you were rotating over to the left side instead of back. And you also have the possibility of just going all the way around and behind them. Uh, looking at your your teammates HP, if the heal were to go off on you over here with uncaught and you fully healed up, I would definitely look for a flank if, a, if that heal came fast. And if the heal didn't come, I try to get a little bit of out of combat regen or if a heal was caught it a little bit and stay right here and then just poke right there. But your shield is able to come out in time. And Ari got dropped. I'd shield charge, I'd charge immediately on that Willow right there. Never mind, the Willow got dropped. Just make sure that Willow died. So the Saris, or the, the Sky died again. This is the decision you have to make is what do you do here? Do you push on the back line? Do you poke at the, the tanks? And I think normally if, you're, if your whole team was up, I'd say screw it, dude. Push on the back line. Make it happen, Captain. But Jannara is not back yet right now. She should be really close. Uh, and when she does come, I think pushing on the back line would be great. Just pray that your Jannara isn't going to go full-fledged onto the point and get blown up by a bunch of stuff. The idea is she wants to make her presence known. She wants to let the DPS to look at her while you're also going straight Pink Panther on them and, and slowly making your way to the back line to poke at them the strix is going to be up there to the right side there's a ying the strix is going to be oh the strix is right there actually there comes the anara you want to back off right now kind of trade off Ooh, no fireball up to take advantage of that good kill on the strix good old by the stairs might get knocked off here Good job. Staying calm. Oh. Ooh, fireball again. Might get it to you. Oh, my goobers. It's a lot of knockback. Sky got a double kill. Everyone got wiped out. <laughs> I was going to let the play, the, the, the gameplay just kind of play through a little bit. I like that you've made this position over here on the left side. Got healed up. Here, you're just going to want to pound in as much as you can. Normally, you'd want to ignore that ruckus when he's got his wrecker up. Ooh, Okay. Normally you want to ignore him, but you have Wrecker, so it's it's legit to go for that. The other thing is the Anara decided to go over on the left side, which is interesting. You notice that, and you decided to help on the front line. What happens is if both tanks go for flanks, people run through the mid, and they kill your team. And they go, hmm, tank, where are you, where are you at? So it's a good job recognizing that there, there does need to be some pressure on the front line to make sure that they just can't run through for free. But your will, your, the Willow just took out the Leon. She's going to keep just pounding into people. Honestly, right now, the time is to retreat. Should be spamming retreat, running. You want to try to give up as little as possible while also staying alive. That Inara not taking the hint. The Inara might actually get dropped. Or it looks like you're taking the brunt of the damage here. Okay, okay, you guys are good. So you guys backed up. You're not you're, you're not in danger of dying anymore, but you're also pretty close. And this is a really good place to, to try to zone from. Just be wary that if the enemies realize that you're getting comfortable in a certain spot and they push on you, you either need to be ready to counter push and fight them back. Or if you realize that your ranks are still down, maybe you still have a couple people running back to retreat to another safe space. Because if they get a kill, then your DPS comes back and their DPS is like, oh, I'm going to fight in the DPS dice. You know what I mean? That's just that's just staggering, dude. That's not good. Should be able to win this fight on the Ruckus. You keep on him. Oh, no. You could have stayed on there if you just would have chilled. Who would have thunk it? This time you got the Ruckus. Suck on a bag of those. Um. So right here, you see that your teammate is low over there and the Saris just died. So you know the Willow is back there. I think, honestly, your best bet is to pray that your DPS takes him out and just pushing on that Strix and the on the Strix and the Ying, or just doing a 180 and retreating. You guys have a little bit of time, and you, got, you ended up able to retreat, but it definitely, definitely either go for the back line, because they're just going to be an easy double kill, double double fireball, or just backtracking immediately where you're at before, which would have been right here, just backtracking, being like, oh, Anara's dead. Oh, Saris is dead. Oh, I I'll go back this way. This way you leave your, your flank exposed, and you just get pounded into you. The other note, too, is how you do the shield. Not that big of a deal in this circumstance, but there's a way to do a moonwalk, and I think there's actually a circumstance that comes up where, where moonwalking comes into play, so we'll, we'll save that for that. If not, I'll hopefully we'll remember, maybe bring up a little clip of me doing a, doing a moonwalk. It's essentially just like backtracking while also keeping your shield forward. I'm sure you're probably aware of it. Maybe you just didn't think it was important to do at the time, but I'll bring it up for anybody who doesn't know. Good wall, allowing you to push out that payload to the corner. And again, trying to push on that left side. You can go through mid if you really want to. You got to charge up. 
but the more you're in this area, this area is, as you can see, this area is, is just bad, you know? But if you're able to get like over here, where you have a little bit of line of sight, it's gonna help you out a lot. And the other thing it's gonna do is it's gonna push the, it's gonna force the enemies to look over there instead of looking at the payload. That was a close one. Screw that ash, no reason to look at her. Gotta fall back here. Not gonna have your shield up. Good heals by the Sarah, so try to line up that double. Ah, oh, that's a good try. Drop, not using ult, smart. You're up 3-1, no reason to force an ult. Yeah, you weren't that far away from it, but it's still a smart move to, ha to hang on to it. Your number one person you're going to want to be counter-ulting is the, the Ruckus, probably. I don't think I've heard a Ruckus ult out of him. All right, you saw the Ying, I believe. There's the Ying. Super aggressive time, nice. Now you know that the Ying is ulted, I would back off just a little bit. I like this right here. This Ash is completely unaware that you're here. And instead of, you know, charging at her and, and shooting, he's aware that this Ying ult has gone, has just started. And you don't want to just start a fight in the middle of the Ying ult. She's going to get too much value out of it. So she's just, he's just kind of chilling, waiting for his cooldowns to come up. Then he goes for a fireball. And especially he waits for the fireball because Brand is the only way he has cauterized and doing any damage. It's just going to be completely useless. Really good spot for a triple fireball there, but didn't work out. There you have the decision to either stay up there and put pressure on the back line, or the fact that your Leon got dropped, try to go back there and help her. Chose to fall back, and now this is going to put your Anara out in a stranded position. So here, I would have immediately, honestly, see this guy having problems with the Strix in the back line? See how this Ruckus is distracted with the Anara, but the Ceres is healing him? I would have pushed. I would have charged. I went, and I just would have pushed the crap out of the Strix, because the Strix is focusing on the sky. The Ash is not that much damage, and the Ruckus isn't looking over in that area. Uh, he did a 180 right at the time, so maybe it ended up would have been a, a very sketchy situation. Oh, the Ash is pushed into the front. I think it's okay to just kind of push. You need to be careful, though. You are very aware that the Ash can boop you. Nice try on the double fireball. You want to keep pushing up as much as you can. And the other thing to note is uh, your Anara is very low. Your Ceres is down, too. You guys have time. If that NR can get out of combat regen, that would have been a good time for a moonwalk, yeah. I'll throw in a clip. Moonwalking is essentially just charging in a direction and keeping your shield up looking another direction. Normally used to charge backwards while keeping your shield pointed forwards. It's pretty simple, just pull out your shield, jump, while in the middle of your jump, snap to where you would like to charge, hit the charge button, and immediately snap back to where you want your shield to face. It takes some practice, but definitely good to have in your arsenal for Fernando. Ulting for your NR right here would have been good. Ruckus is probably looking for an ult. You have no shield. You want to back off. You have a little bit of time. There's the ult. I would... I don't think I would... I wouldn't force. I wouldn't force the, the counter. It's more like I have the ult to counter the Ruckus ult. Not like, oh, you're ulting. Let me step into it. Allow you to melt all my health down to the minimum uh, for the ult and then, and then kill you. I think it was an okay choice, but I think I would have maybe held off and just did some shoulder peeking to get the fireballs off and whatnot. And you would have been able to save your ult. The time was lining up to where you could you could still get back on the point within, you know, 95% or so. 95% or so, you know. Oh, noobers. Goobers. Looking at the front line, pounding them. Ooh, Ash getting the stun off, knocking you into the seedling. Feels bad, man. Backline, backline, backline. That's who you should be focusing right now. Ruckus is fine, though. I probably wouldn't worry about that Ash too much and just make sure that the Ash is the only one actually doing damage. And you do that by DPSing the backline. Easy peasy. You can probably get dropped pretty easily here. So now you're gonna wanna know, you're gonna wanna think, where do I wanna position myself? And I think over here on the right side, having a good fireball range was good. Also to the left side would be fine too. You wanna be you wanna be ready to fall back though. So what, what you saw there was you saw people pushing on the left side, you see this willow. Um, what you're doing here is you're pushing around, you're getting healed by the Saris, so remember the Saris is behind you, hopefully the Saris doesn't get wrapped and go for it. But you're in the situation where if you started to backtrack, you would be running into the entire team meeting over on the right in the mid side, right? Like here's you, my little mouse cursor, here's them. They're pushing in. You're coming back. You go, hey, 
hey, don't push my payload. And they're all just like, you're dead. And you're, and you're super segregated from your, from your team. And you're super separated from your team. So uh, I, I like this idea of pushing in behind them instead of just going back like this, just committing, going all the way around and putting pressure on the back line. Just remember what I said earlier. You want to be able to flip immediately when you realize that they turn around to you, you want to stay alive. Because depending on how long your team realizes, oh, they're not looking at us anymore, let's push them. It's a big deal. I think your focus is mainly going to be on the Willow right now in this position. So look like you are, you are pushing back. But you did it fast enough to where you're not running into the whole team pushing. So that's fine. I think holding that angle, though, was fine. Ooh, give him the old peekaboo. Uh, just keep jumping on that Strix. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. Don't let anyone else deter you. Commit on that Strix. Nice. This is where you want to stay alive. Your Ceres is up. You're going to want to try to find your Ceres. She found you. Yeah, this is going to be an easy defense. We're heading back in. Everyone rushing on the right side. Honestly, not the worst thing in the world. I like the 2-3 split, but... Everyone rushing just makes it so if they're doing a split, you're just going to run into someone and go for it. Here's here's the issue, though, is you kind of... It's it's not on you. It's more about your team. So if, if someone notices that a team is rushing over on a side and they stay back, what they're doing is they're leaving themselves susceptible to the other team rushing the other side. If you're rushing on the right side, what you're doing right now, and the series is like, hmm, no one's taking damage, you would assume that either they're on point or they're rushing on their right side or your left side. The worst thing to do is to just sit back because you're leaving yourself exposed to that team flanking on your left side slash their right side. Over here, see where my mouse cursor is at. The best thing for the Saris to do is to just swap sides with them. But then it becomes a mind game. Now all you've done is just swap sides and now you both are sitting in mid, you coming in from the right side and them coming in from the left side and you stare at each other and go, what do we do now? And that's where it's important to realize when when to push aside, when not to push aside. Do you, do you go back the other way? I think backtracking is one of the worst things to do unless you're doing a split push uh, right now you just look a little confused and you're kind of noticing that the Saris is alone and there you go the ruckus is like look at the Saris she's all alone I'm gonna jump on her you went back to save her but you 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 guys are that Saris is boned dude like there's no way in hell this Saris where, where'd she go I don't know where she went she's dead okay that is just there's literally nothing you know she's yelling enemies behind us enemies behind us like yeah but like run like run with us people always think running um with a team is always bad as a support or someone in the back line because you think running up in the front is bad because you want to be in the back. But if the other team is flanking the other way, you're technically staying back is staying too far forward. Does that make sense? You want to push on the back line right now. Your Naris is going to fo focus on trying to stand alive. Pushing on the front right now is just allowing you to... Uh, ooh, that's not going to happen. Just, uh, just putting more pressure on you, right? There's no damage really being done on the back line. The sky is dead. This would be a good time to ult. Ah, bummer. All right, payload is pushed along a little bit. We're respawned. Ultimate's still at your hand. You want to feel free to use it within, like, the next 30 seconds or so, you know? Your sky just died. This is another thing to say. Like, if you're sitting there and you're, just, you're thinking, should I use an ult? Think of ult as an advantage. So if you have five people up and you have five ults up, Think of it as like 10 people. When you see a person die, you're like, we have to recuperate. We have to compensate for the fact that we have a person down. And that's when an alt can come in handy. That's a really good and simplistic way to look at it. One, is it okay to alt? Wait, look at the time. How far is the payload push? If it's not pushed that far and there's not that much time left, don't alt. You're not going to have time to recharge it. And it's probably not going to go in anyway. And, that, and you can even look at it from the, the offensive side or the defensive side. You can look at that logic. And the other thing is, how many people do we have up? Right now, you're down one. They're up five. An ult right here from anybody would be a good thing to do. Have time to recharge it. Just try to equal the playing field, you know? Good try on the double fireball. Right here, I think would be a great thing is these tanks are coming on the right side, the, the left side here. Just push the mid. Like, oh, tanks, we're pushing on this side. We're going to put pressure. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm just going to run on your back line. It's kind of what happened when your Nara was running over on the left side earlier. And it's fine for you to, to put pressure on them, right? But everyone else should be focusing on the mid because there's no tanks over there. While your Inara could just run right into them, make them push back. While you're distracting the people over on the left. Looks like, I don't know exactly what was going on over there, but you stayed alive and that's good. 
Willow is still ulting right now. Ash is not going to have her ult up. Although I don't know how much time has progressed past the last ult. Good job putting shooting at the Strix. Full health. Look to push on that. Uh, the Willow's dead. The Leon's going to get her. The Strix you want to... Yeah, okay. The Strix was just like, I'm going to die. I'm going to try to stagger. Honestly, right now, if your Leon is up there with you, push on that Ruckus. That Ruckus is alone. The Sky's up there. Push on that Ruckus. That would be a great thing to do because there's no one else helping him. It would have been a huge stagger. Right now, you don't want to do it anymore, though. Good double fireball. Oh, never mind. Watch the knockback. You're going to want to get out away from the, the ledges. Just be careful of that ash waiting for you. Founder. Every minute that you every minute you over overextend like that and you have to fall back like like how you just did and you have your back turned and you're just taking damage, it just it kills. It's really bad, but at least you got back to a position where you can hold. Just be be wary of that. Think about it. If I if I ran into three people right here, would I be able to survive? And you always you always want to think about things like that in, in comparison to your teammates, like where's your team positioned? That's done, you should be able to stay alive with your shield. I'd go for a triple fireball here. Like look to the left, there's a big fireball opportunity, and then put your shield up, that's fine. And get to that payload as fast as possible. Make sure you're stopping that. An ult right there would be fine. You're down two people, you need to keep this alive. The sadly, when you were knocked away, you weren't able to really contest the point. So the ult was just kind of, I'm keeping myself alive for a few seconds. If you were able to stay a little bit close, it'd be fine. I don't think that there's an end score screen, but there's a, there's a cool little outro. Okay, he's got other ranked games. I don't have a scoreboard to look at, but I can imagine the Cyrus healed a bunch and you shielded a bunch. Who would have thunk it? Your loadout, the CC reduction, while it's okay to do it for the knockback, if you just play around not being near ledges, you would have been fine, right? So maybe doing something like Hot Pursuit just to be able to run on that back line, but that's not in any more. Who knows what to do now? People are still trying to come up with loadouts. Item choices, I dug it. The Rucker helped you out on the Ruckus a little bit. Most of the time when you see a Ruckus shield, you just go, okay, cool. You got it. You got it. I'll back off. Oh, your shield's down? I'm gonna pour damage into you. But a good Ruckus will push with the shield up so we can take advantage of the shield. Anyway, Rejuvenate, obviously great to max out, and you did that. I know the items didn't pop up too much during the game, but... Oh, and I just noticed I recorded this on the wrong source, so sorry the G2A logo kept popping up. I normally don't, don't do that for YouTube videos unless I'm doing it from the stream. Lastly, the play style. Just looking to be a little bit more aggressive in the back line the sky was going back there if you see a sky back there you go okay i'll help you out because a tank in a sky back there is much more scarier than just a sky good awareness i'm not stacking up with the other tank some of the fireballs you threw out were a little bit preemptive it looked like you saw a person you're like i'm just gonna throw it out and hopefully I, I can snap to him in time but maybe taking a little bit more time to line up your fireballs would have helped out a lot and of course the moonwalking thing that i showed can always help too i want to thank emblor just blower for sending in this coach kami and i'm gonna head out of here i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you next time Hey, thanks for watching. I'm not going to be one of those people who asks you to like and subscribe, so I'm not going to ask.